Good afternoon. After these introductions, let me tell you that the idea to hold this symposium came from the Argentine Association of Soil Sciences. We are in the association researchers and professionals that work on soil science across the country. Our mission is to strengthen the development and dissemination of soil sciences. We try to find practical applications to all our research results. We try to use different uh, dissemination tools, conferences, symposiums, meetings, publications. And we um, found this, uh, m this method of disseminating information quite interesting because this allows us to communicate new tools and new concepts. The commission is chaired by Noel Runcicargo, Secretary Guillermo Di Vito, and the other commission members are myself, Juan Manuel Ucele, and Juan Manuel Pautaso. So I invite Fernando to make his presentation. Good afternoon. As Carolina said, let me thank you for being here after a long day. And from the National Association of Soil Sciences, let me thank APRESIR for letting us hold this symposium. What we are doing is a short version of a symposium. We will try. Anybody can see a slide? No. OK. While uh, the slides come on the screen, let me tell you that our idea is to explain the diagnostic methods that we are going to use two or three messages to take home. The title of my presentation is Traditional and New Diagnostic Methods, New Tools. Many of you will understand why I refer to traditional. And the new tools will be explained by a younger person, Noel Peralta. So my idea here is to give you, as I said, two or three messages to take home. First, we will remember what a diagnosis is. So I check the word in the dictionary. This is the collection and analysis of data to assess different problems. What we want to do here is to make a diagnostic, a fertility diagnostic, understand and get to know the fertility of a special plot and what we can do to attain the goals in terms of yield based on our production system. This is the basis for an efficient management of nutrients. Remember that we need source, rate, and time, and way application manner, but we also need good agricultural practices. We need not only these uh, practices, but also good diagnostics, because this will result in an efficient use of nutrients that are already available in the soil. Before we go into details, into chemical fertility, 
If anybody moves the slides, they will get to the end of my presentation before I do. There. Before I go into this chemical fertility, let me remember that diagnosis starts by getting to know our soils. So let's take a shovel, let's, ta let's look at the soil, let's see the physical characteristic, compaction, root system, etc. Things that we have always been talking about. Now let's go into the tools. There were many different photographs of different tools. The traditional tool is soil analysis that continues to be the most widely used tool. But uh, Noel will explain you that there are new tools that have been developed in recent years. So, the soil analysis. The first question is, do we use it? If you check and you estimate how many soil analyses are completed in our plots year after year, in 2009, we estimate that there was one sample every 250 hectares. If we ask the labs, they would say that they have been receiving 20% less samples. So in 2015, it's probably one sample every 300 hectares. We are trying to do precision agriculture, one sample every 300 hectares. So the next question is, if we get only one sample every 300 hectares, this soil analysis is a traditional tool or a new tool? Because many people may not know it and is evidently not using it. So let's be very aware that we need soil analysis. This curve gives good information. There are 532 data of soybean response to phosphorus. You see the response frequency expressed in the horizontal axis in soybean kilograms per P category in the soil from the minus 10 to the highest, which is the green curve. This is telling me, if I summarize this information, is that the probable response to a higher cost in soybean per kilogram of P is 60 to 70 percent in soils below 10 ppm, 55 to 60 percent in soils from 10 to 15 ppm and 20 to 30 percent in soils above 15 ppm. This is the possible response and this is the kind of information where we can base our diagnosis. A kilogram of P in compared to soybean is about 11 to 13 kilograms of soybean per kilogram of P. But if you check uh, today numbers, that has been reduced to seven kilograms of soybean per kilogram of P. So we have higher response probability because we have a better r relationship between price and cost. So this is one way is to address a soil analysis. There are two examples here, also from that series of data. One plot low in P, Bray phosphorus 5 ppm, another one in Humboldt, Bray P11, I'm sorry, 18 ppm. And you can see the response to fertilization in the low P plot, 30 kilograms per P kilogram. In the high plot, 6 kilograms of soybean per applied kilogram of P. Of course, the economic response in a low plot, the response is not giving me back the investment I've made. If I had done this without a diagnostic and my first decision was not to apply, well, I have 
I wouldn't have won anything. But without a diagnosis, I decide to apply in low P, I would have won. I would have been lucky. In the high P level, what I see is that we invested in soil P, but you know the P dynamics, this P will remain f and will be used next year, but we didn't need. So that is why I put investment between inverted commas. So the diagnosis would have tell me here you apply, here you don't apply. That Those are the red circles. In the high P, if I didn't apply, I would win. In the low P, if I apply, I win. So that is what the diagnosis can do for the management of our land. A very brief comment. You can see this in the literature. Let's be very careful with sampling. Soil analysis depends upon good sampling. There are many different methods to do sampling, but let's be careful there. Let's uh, use uh, our time for, to good sampling. This is about uh, fertilization diagnosis. This figure shows this black box. I have an, an amount, a number of data, soil analysis, goal yield, soil type. If I location, if I process this, I get to the rate. Inside the box, we have calibration, additional information, data management, habits, philosophy, assumptions, many components of our decision. It is important in the knowledge era when we handle so many databases, we should know how to handle databases. So a message I want you to take home is that it is very important to build and preserve databases and it is everybody's responsibilities not only farmers and consultants and institutions and organizations the idea is for instance by producing data and creating databases and resorting to the work done by Mr. Corrent in past years, if I know the P response to corn in Argentina, whether if I am in an Arhudol, a typical Arhudol or an Abludol, this is information that we should all collect, elaborate on it, build databases so that on a daily basis we can resort to better information. So four messages that I want you to take home. Four messages for the four R management. Remember, let's do diagnosis, traditional or new diagnosis. Let's eliminate this traditional and new. Let's resort to comprehensive diagnostic. The second message, let's be very careful with sampling. It's difficult to take a good sample from the soil because the lab is going to assess the soil I give them. I need to sample properly. We have to be very careful when we sample. And the last message, let's develop robust databases. This idea of the Argentine Association of Soil Science is to build databases, to handle them, to assess them. And the association will demand our cooperation. So we invite you to contribute to this project. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Before I start with my talk, I want to thank I proceed organizers for the invitation. 
I have a few minutes to cover some co concepts for site-specific management and how to put that into practice in our production plots. First question, we should ask why a site-specific package should be applied into our production plots. You see two plots, wheat and corn, which were harvested with monitors. The image below offers a, an average yield of 10,000 kilos. There are extreme conditions, 13,000 kil kilos or 7,000 7, kilos, depending on the conditions. There's a consistent technological package applied there based on regional guidelines. It's 160 minus X. That model represents the center, the center data. No minimum nor maximum values are included. Nowadays, we have a great deal of information to quantify variability of that information. For example, harvest monitors. To adjust the technological package based on site or adjust regional models, as Fernando explained, according to each specific site or localization. Site-specific package to be successful has to be uh, accompanied with a good characterization of the environment. That is key. How to quantify and how to handle plot variability, satellite, satellite images, geophysical sensors measuring uh, conductivity in soils, topographic indexes of humidity or other ratios which reflect water movement, which are easily measured and in an intensive manner. Once we know the variables, we should start the characterization based on productivity maps or management zones, that is, separating plots into different pro uh, pro uh, in, into plots of different product production capabilities or that can be sustained over the time. It's key to validate the management zone. What we do on our PCs or desktops should be well represented in field. And soil sampling is key element to attain this, as Fernando said. Soil sampling should be correctly performed because based on those analyses, we will elaborate our guidelines based on each specific site. And that is accuracy agriculture. As an example, I'll show you this, how to characterize the environment within a plot. This is from the southeast of Córdoba. Different site-specific variable were mapped. Historical yielding are record. Three management zones were created for the plot, red zones, low productivity. In those environments, we found sandy soils with a very low capacity of water aggregation and no good uh, productivity. What you see in green is high productivity. Those are loamy soils with higher contents of clay and loam, which gives more capacity to store water, therefore higher yield. This is characterization of the environment, which has been validated, rendering different productive environments. How shall we tackle those environments? Different ways of addressing them. But we should quantify and generate our own information. Tests are a key element also. These are simple essays prescribing uh, essays which give us a lot of ends and thus results into lower estimation errors. This is a simple example for you to understand the concept. In this case, the low productivity environment 
is related to a low response to nitrogen aggregate when productivity is medium or high nitrogen response and yields are higher. This is associated to the different capacities of water retention of the soil for the developing crops. These are biological models. We can add the econom economic variable, which is how many kilograms of grain we need to pay n unit. For high productivity environment, optimal and model was 140 minus X. Medium productivity, 125. Low productivity, 35 minus X. There's an N, delta N, which is interesting, and with a wide variation. We can assume or think what would have happened if we had managed consistently this plot that is regional. For example, 150 minus X for high productivity, good results, medium productivity, we could have applied extra 25 kilos, but for the low productivity, we would have applied 115 extra kilos of N that the plant would, wouldn't use, and that will be floating on the soil, and there's a high possibility of lixiviation of nitrogen bleaching of ni nitrogen. Those optimal models are now translated into efficiencies. How does efficiency vary within specific site environments? Site-specific models increase efficiency, and efficiency varies in association to environment. The take-home message is for site-specific management Efficiency increased by 21% compared to the standard or uh, uh, uniform regional model. Based on an, ass an assay on wheat in the southeast of Buenos Aires, that network is constantly uh, receives feedback. Environment was very well characterized directed soils, topographic indexes, satellite images, and the so, we found a strong interaction, those deer and rates. And we wanted to set a regional model for this, and we've discovered that high production um, rate was associated to deep soils, which are characterized by certain particulars, low productivity associated to slopes with the uh, limitation. You can see in the graphics a wide var variation in the curves per environment. When we analyze economic variables, we should carry out a site-specific analysis for our productive plot. You can see here what would have happened if uh, a consistent package would have been applied instead of the site-specific method. Efficiency would have been 4.8 for the uh, consistent uh, management, but with an accurate agricultural system, 7.9 would have been uh, the result. So that means an increase of the 40% of the use, efficient use of nitrogen. Regarding phosphorus, this is an interesting study proposed by Bermudez. Figure one is a productivity map of a farm with three environments, low, medium, high productivity. Figure number two, yield map in corn for this farm where high productivity environments are associated to a yield above 12 tons, low productivity below 8, and transition is an average of 10 tons. Figure number 3 shows P extraction on the map based on environments, high productivity environments, give 30 P kilos of P, 
low productivity 20 and intermediate values from 20 to 30 kilos of phosphorus or P. The balance of P can be considered, can be compared with the traditional method against the site specific. What happens in low productivity, balances are neutral to slightly positive. Intermediate productivity renders negative balance between 15 kilos of phosphorus and for high productivity environments, we are doing mining activities because we are taking out about 20 to 30 kilograms of phosphorus and that mining of this phosphorus offers spatial variability. We should characterize the environment to manage the variability and elaborate site-specific guidelines. In this study, the, the grain use was uh, wheat. It's from our region. It shows the response of wheat uh, when phosphorus is added. It depends on the productivity and the amount of phosphorus that we are adding and the P bray on the soil. Curves indicate the probability of response. Low productivity with 40 centimeters soils, 4,000 kilograms of yield approximately. Balance is 9 ppm of P. Medium productivity, 70 centimeters in depth, 5,000 kilos of yield. Balance is about 16 ppm. High productivity environment. The depth is about 100 centimeters. The balance is around 20 ppm. This information is highly valuable and shows the importance of using site-specific technological methods to quantify variability. variability. To close my presentation, I want to share two slides with you to show what we should focus on in research and development. We should generate fertilization models, refertilization or balanced fertilization on site specific models. This is a self criticism of an error that we made last year while working on a production plot in our area, high potential weeds, we performed an excellent environment characterization. The image on the left shows goals for each environment. We fertilized each environment based on Rose's uh, model, considering nitrate and none. But the end of the season, all these Plots were harvested with falls of 30 to 40 percent decreases of yield because we took a small part of the story. We forgot to consider sulfur when we carried out the intensive uh, soil intensive analysis, and we saw high values of exchange, sodium exchange, which may have affected yield and the response curves that I'm not going to show because uh, I'm short of, short, short of time. This pivot was irrigated for several years. Maybe water was not a good quality water and the disadvantages would have affected the eventual yield of the crop. We also took a prescription with urea, then a heavy rainfall came uh, and there was bleaching. So we should consider this as a system as a whole, not individually what's wrong with what's happening with nitrogen or with other products. This offers a high potential in the short term.
considering today's technologies, we should generate nutrition maps for our crops, nitrogen maps. And we should prescribe based on these maps. We have too many green indexes of satellite images associated to nitrogen concentrations in plant and biomass. The figure on the left shows the variation of nutritional indexes ratios in plots which have different nitrogen treatments but can be our production plots. They represent uh, above one values which means a good nutrition in the plant. The values below one in red or orange, like a danger flag, indicates nitrogen deficit. Those nutritional ratios are translated into kilograms per hectare for re-fertilization, adjusting our model based on the goal, proteins, yield, whatever. The technology available nowadays will enable us in the short term to implement these technologies to improve efficiency of the supplies we use. To close this presentation, my message is the size-specific agronomic management is a technology to improve supply efficiency, which can be translated into an increased profitability. This technological package is society friendly because of the environmental impact. We are applying fertilizers or supplies with the, at the correct doses, ratios in the correct place, and that's our goal from IPNI. Any technological package or this technology makes a contribution like a grain of sand for a sustainable production system. That's the message I want to I want you to take from this talk. Thank you. Mabel Trano for the last presentation. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Thank you, Apresir, for the invitation. I'm going to share a test that we did on long term fertilization. This is a long uh, duration trial with two different strategies, one replenishment and the other one was diagnosis. This is the agenda data based on this long duration trial. I will differentiate replenishment to diagnosis and I will explain the productive response, the economic feasibility and the effects on the physical and chemical characteristics of the soil derived from the trial. The trial was uh, replicated in two sites, one in Don Osvaldo, the other in Los Chañaditos. This is in the province of uh, the Cordoba, in the southeast. These are the characteristics of the um, soils in, at the start of the uh, trial. Soils are uh, typical Arguedol series Hansen class 1 with uh, water table influence. Uh, in uh, the past 120 years, there have been uh, two pastures and the rest of the time uh, the fields were devoted to agriculture. There have been some rotations, uh, agricultural livestock. The last uh, tillage was in 1996 or 91. Organic matter 2.4 and 3.12 the trial has been going on for 17 growing years under the rotation that you can see 50 percent corn 50 percent soybean wheat in one side we have um, corn in the other soybean and the following year the other way around that is uh, three crops every year what are the treatments well we have a control 
diagnostic of SNNP and NPS diagnostic and replenishment. Let's differentiate replenishment and diagnostic. At first, diagnostic is in 1999 or 2000, but it's probably better to talk about area average rates. And replenishment is to replenish or to give back the nutrients that the grain takes from the soil. These are the tables, these are IBNI tables created by Fernando Garcia. This is just an example for a 5,000 kilogram wheat and soybean. We have a 150 map and sulfur. You could see the numbers on the screen. Now going into the response for rotation, the average of fertilizers used in the 17 growing years in the two treatments, replenishment and diagnostic, we used 400 urea, calcium 130, MAP 190, and 80. Well, we have the two sides. And the cost is also 268 versus 118. These are based on current prices, $150 in excess for replenishment. This 400 kilograms of urea is an important number because the goal of the trial is to see what happens with the physical chemical properties of the soil under this fertilization pattern and not to check the economics of the trial. Probably you can get the similar yield using less urea. This is the yield and the income produced in the 17 uh, um, growing seasons. You have the first column is wheat, the second is soybean, and the third is corn. We have 10,945 kilograms in uh, corn. We have 513 wheat in soybean, minus 53, and in corn, 12, uh, 1,250. That's the difference in yield. The first line is fertilization and reposition, or the second is fertilization for diagnosis. If we have a nutrient balance, what we input with fertilization, what we take away with the grain, I'm going to be talking about P and S. I'm not going to refer to N. Replenishment, the balance was positive 9 kilograms of P, 8 kilograms of F. In diagnosis, minus 13 in P, minus 2 in S. If you get to the balance for replenishment, you have 22 kilograms of P in replenishment and 10 of S. If we um, value this, we have a capitalization of $63 per hectare per year. The final result of what I've been showing is higher cost of fertilization, $150 compared to replenishment, uh, higher income per production, $98 per hectare per year, a capitalization of PNS, $63 per hectare per year, and the economic balance is $11 positive per hectare per year. So remember what I said about urea, 400 kilograms of urea. If I input less, I have to add $50 to this $11 and I have created one ton more a year on average, and I left an environment that is better than the environment I found when I started. This is replenishment versus diagnosis. Simple. Soybean in red, what are the response possibilities? When does replenishment 
yields more. In soybean, very low. Diagnosis yields better than replenishment, and the response is maximum 500 kilograms. In grass, the response level is higher, three every four years. The replenishment um, yields better than diagnostics. This is approximately the same on the X um, axis. You have wheat, and this is the difference between replenishment and diagnosis. It's also response. The points in the ends of the graph, this uh, little dot here is when wheat yielded five kilograms more and soybean five kilograms less in response. It corresponds to Don Osvaldo when rainfall was half in the critical period. And this is also in Don Osvaldo where soybean was 400 kilograms more in replenishment and wheat 500 kilograms less. This is a year when the water or the moisture in the profile was not favorable. When we have a very good wheat, will we have a bad soybean afterwards? No. We've had uh, very good yielding wheats, uh, above 5,000 kilograms, leaving very little water in the soil. And after that, we have 4,000 kilogram soybean. Wheat yield is associated to the amount of water in the of moisture in the profile. So if rainfall accompanies the season, the second soybean can have um, problems. If we go to the chemical aspect, Don Osvaldo y los chañaritos. Los Chañaritos is a better soil. Here you have a gap in brace P, replenishment in green, diagnosis in yellow. And you see the gap that widens not so much in Los Chañaritos. Why? Because if you check both sides, the, mid, the, the mean response comparing both sides and both uh, crops, uh, corn in Los Chañaritos yields 30% more, wheat 15% more, soybean 5% more. So the extraction level here is different than here. The previous slide is also from uh, Engineer Goodell from Marco Juarez Inta. Here we are comparing again Los Chañaritos with the other side, and we are comparing different years, similar soils in the department of Marco Juarez. Both treatments are above the area averages in wheat, 7% above in wheat, uh, in corn, 7%, wheat, 18%, soybean, 30%. Replenishment, you have the numbers on the slide. Now, if I go to what we're doing in Don Osvaldo, these are final considerations what we do. The soil analysis for grasses is uh, performed every year before planting, always in the same time of year, always in the same lab, to minimize errors. In terms of P and S, we use replenishment criteria. And for N, we level corn at 190 to 120 UN nitrogen units, I'm sorry, and wheat 150, 170 at 0 to 60 centimeters uh, deep soil plus fertilizers. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Guillermo. The Q&A session is opened. To uh, start the discussion, my first question. Fernando said that it is still important and it will be important to improve diagnosis. 
my, my question is, how can we generate these more robust databases if people from production or appreciate teamworks who already have databases, how can we incorporate such databases to our data and improve models? Thank you, Carolina. This is not something we had arranged, but it's a very good question because what we are trying to do is to start the generation of databases uh, to form partnerships to carry out this job. And from IPNI, based on Ariane Correndo's thesis with the collaboration of other professionals from the University of Buenos Aires, we want to give shape to this partnership. We would be very happy if we could get any information you have. What we need basically is the information of essays or tests where response to phosphorus has been tested in maize and soybean and response to nitrogen in maize. You can come to us and share, share your concern, Fernando Salvaciotti, and we can incorporate those data so that we can create an, a consolidated database. All those who have information that you may deem useful, please come and share that information. Those tools will be useful for us and for you to improve diagnosis, which means improving the investment on fertilizers. From the audience, a question for you. Why, considering there are more technological tools, we carry out fewer soil analysis? Good question. And we, we ask that question ourselves very often. Many times, we do not take into account the type of information. When we uh, gave shape to this presentation with Adrian, we wanted to show you which could be the impact Soil analysis is not magic, but it's a response probability. Database analysis has shown today that can be carried out in the future now with the potentiality of technology for analyzing databases that could be available very quickly. We could gain accuracy to tell you on each plot or each environment what to do. The curves, as we mentioned today, within each environment should be our goal. We think this is not performed because we don't visualize this. That's why we showed the examples of the plot with the low phosphorus and high phosphorus plot. Concrete information was there. If you took diagnosis into account, the situation was a win or win. And if you extrapolate, that information and carry out a deeper analysis, as Ishermo showed at the end, we have clearly two different situations of plots which responded differently to fertilization. And diagnosis would have helped us. We can also share with you this. Consider that the fact of using more efficiently nutrients every day is not just a matter of gaining on the, the return on inver investment. This is something society will require due to environmental issues. And this will be a, car, a requirement from our buyers. If you want to sell Walmart, Walmart will ask you how you performed the uh, crop from the very beginning till the moment you delivered the grain. But they want to learn the whole process. And that will affect us. And we have some examples in which this has happened. Events like this one are the place where we should focus and emphasize on the use of soil analysis, which renders useful information. Now, well. Based uh, connecting with what Fernando says, the tools that you presented are meant to improve efficiency. And they are important 
for the environment, not only for, from the investment point of view, but to improve the efficiency of nitrogen. You mentioned an increase in profitability when nutrients were managed on a site-specific approach. Do you have estimations of how that profitability improves with this method? Before saying the value in, in dollars, I, I would say that when you compare a project of a site-specific versus a consistent management, that the variation is similar to price var variability. Fertilizers, grains, the year introduces variation, seasons, and interplot. The variation within the plot is also a factor. There is a benefit for site-specific methods when there's a variation among plots rather than when plots are quite consistent, uniform. Gross margins range from $10, $12, and we had the plot with $100. Average is $35, $40. For wheat, we have carried out these tests over three or four years. Average is $25. When comparing a consistent model against a size-specific model, we have some data, but our database is not quite huge. Last year, the value was 15 to 20 uh, dollars for barley. We should resort to this type of essays to analyze the impact on quality. We do not have data on this, but I think it's worth working on the quality aspect of crops. Specifically, if you can get a surplus on price in the future, that could be important. Guillermo, one question for you. If you add value from the company, by performing essays and trying to improve nutrient management, how do these results reflect are reflected on the actual production strategy of the company? Translation is uh, important, significant, specifically talking about replenishment. Most of you learn is a practically applied on the plot. You showed that for some instances, figures were negative, but then there were some positive figure, figures. Is there only when a strategy is changed? No, we replenish because that's the condition which renders the higher amounts of income. The money you spend on fertilizers is the best investment. It offers the best return on investment. The correct fertilization of the crop is the best ROI. It's worth mentioning that the information we get from each plot is part of what we can give back to the plot to improve production, to replenish nutrients, and to improve the soil and the system. Fernando, another question for you. We go back to the basis of fertility. Apart from Ray P, are there other techniques to improve P diagnosis? It's a wide question. Ray P is an extractant of what is used to determine the P rate ratio indicating the particular condition of the soil. There are some other ratios, mainly Olsen. In Argentina, Ray was calibrated. The most recent um, in Brazil, in Campinas, the resign method had been, has been developed. What we should do is recalibrate here in Argentina. Ray P offers a good adjustment. So we do not need to make investment on other methods. There's no strong reason to change. 
Are there data of nitrogenated residues in uh, table waters? No, there is no data. We have analyzed the label to see if we could decrease nitrogen fertilization, but the result was very low. We have uh, superficial layers this year, and we wanted to analyze that uh, the water table on wheat, we do not have uh, too much data, but when we had some, there was no resi residual components found. When the water table is contaminated with ni nitrates, it could affect other environmental factors. So we should focus on an efficient management to improve the f economic aspects of the company and to take care of the environment and the soil. Any other question? How do you think nitrogen should be diagnosed for environment with water table? Example, Mar Marco Juarez. First of all, we should analyze water quality to learn how much in does the, ta the water table offer. And then we should try to shape the behavior of that water table. We do have relatively good data of simulation from simulation models of water tables and how they behave. We should learn the type of water and the end concentration of that water for the crops. Nowadays, that information is not easily available, but it's worth starting doing that. Water ta tables uh, have an important Transi transitional behavior, and when you use a technological package, you will want stable behaviors. Many plots nowadays are adjusted based on the water table, are characterized based on the water table. But it could be interesting to start handling, the, considering this as one more variable to the model. It's difficult. We should also take into account that these water tables may have poor qualities which are not good for the soil, like high sodium content. Those parameters should also be taken into account, not just focusing on the nutrients we need. It's time to finish. Thank you very much. We wish you take a useful message home. And you are invited to join our association. We will be waiting for you. And we wish we can give an answer to you and improve your soils and take care of your soil to improve production. Thank you.